Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, October 30th, 2020, and this is our weekly uh, video. We do it every Friday. Take a look and see what's been going on with the uh, auctions in different places, what's happening in the auction market in general to do with Asian and Chinese art. We're going to take a peek later on in this video at uh, some auction results over on eBay, as we always do, and over on Catawiki, and some upcoming things and uh, so forth. But a couple of things I wanted to get to before we get into this, and one of them is the bitamoutlive.com auction site that we've been working on. We shared it with you a month and a half, two months ago, as it was just getting started. We asked that folks send in uh, suggestions and ideas, which everyone did. I was really gratified. I, was un uh, I made a list of it. We had over 300 emails from people asking asking about uh, you know, uh, you know, what will be allowed to be sold on the site, what are the commission rates going to be, what are the, the, the terms as far as what the sellers are allowed to do, because as you know, a lot of auction sites are very, very restrictive. Um, when you put things on their sites, you cannot talk directly with the buyer. They don't allow uh, uh, open conversations, which we think is just childish and ridiculous. Of course, you should be able to. And uh, we're going to go through some of it and show you how it's looking today, how the site is looking. As you know, that we shared this before. This was the homepage which we had laid out very easily, very quickly, um, because it's, it, there's not a lot happening on here. It's just linked to other parts of the site. The biggest complication we've hit in the last month was the integration of the languages because we decided, um, I decided about a, month and a, about a month and a week ago that I, was, I wanted to broaden the language options on here for users because not everyone speaks English, you know? So I thought, well, we should do something. So I contacted our, our people doing the development work and um, they added uh, the uh, uh, languages of French, uh, ch simplified Chinese, uh, German, Italian, and Spanish. All right, and, and it isn't necessarily that hard to do when you're just doing a, a sales site like so many people have a Shopify site or something like that. But this site has an integrated auction platform and it's integrated into a, a series of themes and so forth. And when you add auctions, uh, and uh, working with fixed price things on the same site, it gets unbelievably complicated. And uh, it took a number of workarounds to do it. So there will be an auction page and there will be a shop page. So if you want to buy fixed price items, you can go there. If you're interested in auctions, you can go there. We also are added some things here, rules and terms, learning learning and info for people who want to look things up. And we're going to go through just some of them really quickly to give you an idea of how it looks and what the feel of it will be. I will do a couple of videos and so forth to help everybody sort of get their feet wet, how to, how to, how to create the account, how to upload images, how to edit them, um, uh, you know, how you should probably do them and so forth to make it as easy as possible for everybody. Because starting uh, to do things on a new site sometimes can be a little confusing and time uh, time consuming if, if you don't have some guidance uh, it's the same whether it's eBay or, or, or Etsy or any other site so we're, we but we've managed to keep it really simple um, uh, basically uh, you you can sign up for an account just to buy uh, things if you're a buyer and then if you want to become a vendor you click that and then that adds that component to your account automatically okay so this is what the edit product page will look like, just as an example. All right, you have a simple dashboard over on the side here to look things up. You have a button for making auction listings. You have a button for making fixed price lot listings. Very simple. And uh, this is what uh, an individual product listing will look like, basically. Uh, it'll be a very simple format. The images are all, of course, enlargeable like this. We want to look at them. Uh, you can add many more images. We only put one in. You can put in 20 if you want. Uh, we recommend no fewer than eight. That's sort of a good safe ballpark number to use and take good photographs on gradient backgrounds or a black background or a white background using photo paper. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And it's not because uh, uh, we don't think you can take good pictures, but everybody can take better pictures. Okay. And then over here, we have, we'll have a section for frequent, frequent questions. And we did have a lot of questions. And from those, we sort of we, we devised a bunch of answers and built them into the site. And then we created this page on um, who, who can buy on the site, who can sell on the site, how it works, um, and what the basic mission of the site is. And basically, it's to make buyers and sellers, give them a place where you can do business and, and build your collections and sell things. Um, like adults, and, and we're not going to treat you like children. Okay. Uh, the only thing we ask is we are going to have some very tough rules and uh, rules on the site regarding the posting of fakes, and the po and for people who don't pay their bills. Okay. Th those are two areas that are not going to be tolerated. Period. 
all right? Um, and who you can accept, accept what, what kind of payments can you accept? Uh, basically, you know, PayPal, credit cards, and all that good stuff, all right? We've got, to just, we've got a little work to do at the bottom of the stage to finish it because we put in some test templates to see what would work. And uh, we'll finish this up over the weekend, and that page will be done. And then over here, terms and conditions, the basic stuff that you have on every website, but we didn't do it with miniature, you know, six-point type, uh, like the back of a credit card uh, agreement. We did it nice big print, easy to read, and it's very, very brief. It's very simple. We have a quick overview at the top and then more details at the bottom should you want to know more, know more about selling. Here's a, section, a little section on buying and fees. A lot of people have asked about fees because if you're a dealer and you're doing this for a living, Fees matter. Commissions matter. And uh, we desperately wanted to keep it under 10%. Or, or, or initially, we wanted to keep it under uh, like 12%. And we thought, well, maybe we can do a little better. And we sharpened our pencils. We worked with some people. And we were able to get it in at 8%. Um, period. That's it. And there will be no commissions. Like on eBay, they charge commissions now on shipping. I don't know if you're aware of that. We're not going to charge your commission on your shipping fees, all right? That would be very unfair. Um, uh, uh, we're not going to charge uh, you know, anything to list things. There will be no listing fees. You, there'll be no fee to set up a store for your, you know, to set up your own place with your information and all that. No fees. Just it's, it's only if it sells you pay us. Okay, that's all we ask. And, uh, and then there's some other useful information on the site, places you can look up things and so forth. There's a site overview, sort of general uh, rules about, uh, as I said, fakes and copies. And if you have something and you don't know what it is, we're going to help you with it. Uh, if, 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 you know, we don't mind. People honestly cannot know what things are all the time. And we will help you as much as we can. We just don't want anybody being deceptive on here. That's a, that's a big, big no-no. And then some, some more explanation, deeper explanations on buying details and so forth. But it's pretty simple. That, that is the entire, uh, basically, rules of the road for the site itself. And we also realized that a lot of people use the bitamount.com site, obviously, for things like auction catalogs, auction results, museums. They want to get to this YouTube channel quickly and easily and so forth. So we've got a page on here under learning, which has a lot of the information that we copied directly off of the bitamount.com home, the big site, the main site, and brought it over here, including the links to all of the museums exactly as it is over on bitamount and all the auction results pages also here. So if you're doing a listing and you you want to look up something over at Christie's to see what a comparable thing brought or brought at Sotheby's, you can do it right here. You, you, you can use it as a tool, as your guide to help you describe things and so forth. Sometimes you can even just cut and paste some of the information and a link to our YouTube channel here if you want to uh, go check something over here. And then the bid amount form. We did not, we're not going to create, I don't think it's a good idea to create a whole separate form here because the form on bidamount.com already has its own page, its own setup uh, because of the way that's formatted. Um, and many of you have noticed that the, the form actually shows up in, on Google search results all the time because that form is heavily search engine optimized. And those of you who know computers know what that means. So often, even when I'm looking things up, I'll come across something that's been on the forum with, with, about, about a specific type of object, and it's, it sends, us right, sends me right back to my own pages. So it's sort of interesting. All right. And uh, so that's, that's basically it. As I said, we've, we've kept it really, really, really simple. We've even added a wish list page for people that are looking for specific things. If you're a seller, this will come in handy for you because you might have somebody that says, I'm looking for a whatever, you know, a late Ming Buddha bronze. Well, if you've got one and, and uh, you, you, you see that somebody's asking for one, you can just get in touch with them. Do it, make, yourself, make yourself a deal. All right, and you'll be able to put your email addresses and your contact information as much as you want on your own uh, uh, on your own page when you set it up. Okay, so that's basically it. That's 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 where we are right now. I hope folks like it. We're going to change some of the colors, like this blue. I'm not crazy about, but those are all sort of last minute fixes. But other than that, the site is basically built, and um, uh, we're going to be doing some testing on it next week, and then we'll we'll get it ready. Okay. Thank you. Now, let's mosey on over here to the bookcase. This week, we listed, uh, there's a sale coming up early in November. And it, it, it's been on Christie's and Bottoms now for a little while, but they were sort of slow as they have been in the past getting the cat in the last month, a few months, getting catalogs and information up. So we grabbed them all this week and got them posted. And uh, we're going to do, a, like I said, we'll do a video on it on Monday. 
to give people sort of a preview of this, if, if you've got some time over the weekend, uh, go to either Christie's or Bottoms or Sotheby's, and you can look on there. If you want to see the catalogs, you can check it out over on the bitamount.com research section, which is in the little black drop-down bar on the home page. It's the first item on the page. And you have things like this. Now, this bottom sale, Asian art, uh, those of you that are, are in, in, in the UK, especially if you're near London, you're, you're going to check this sale out. Because Bonhams does a great job at assembling lots. It is a wonderful place to go if you're a dealer. If you're a collector, too. I'm not saying it's not a good place for collectors, but it's a really good place for dealers because they put lots together. This is one lot, okay? 26, 26 um, 18th century plates. It's the kind of thing they do. They, they have lots in here of uh, bronzes, some good reference books, and so forth. There's all kinds of uh, uh, good, good things on here. If you're a dealer and you're looking to build inventory, they have a large section of uh, jades in this, uh, in this auction. And the estimates you're going to find are quite reasonable. They have very reasonable estimates in their uh, regular Asian art sales. You know, 1,000 to 1,500 pounds for all these jades. That's one lot. All right, so you want to check that out. And we'll talk about that a bit more on Monday, how, 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 how I as a dealer, if I were in London or, or, or chasing stuff down a lot these days, this is how I would do it. Then important Chinese works of art at Christie's. This is a wonderful catalog. And on the cover, there's these spectacular bronze um, chariot fittings. And um, there's a good write-up on these. They're, they're estimated, you know, three, 400,000 pounds. They're not terribly big. They're quite small, but they're beautifully made. And uh, then there's another Bonhams catalog for fine Chinese art. This is the a little bit more expensive uh, material, but some great things. And I and and and, and, and Bonhams is very uh, fair on their estimates. Uh, they're very reasonable. They want the stuff to sell. And also on the Bonhams uh, side is this. This is their uh, Netsky. They have a private collection, a French collection of Netskis, Japanese Netskis. This is a very nice catalog. And in the back of it are the signatures of the Netskis, which they took the time to photograph, which is an absolute wonderful thing to have if you're a Netsky buyer. And each one has a number attached to it, which corresponds to the lot number in the sale. So if you're a Netsky buyer, uh, uh, you want to see that catalog and, and maybe link it and save it for yourself because it is very well done. Nice, nice catalog. And then over here to this, this is the Sotheby's uh, Imperial Porcelain Sale that they've got coming up. Uh, absolutely wonderful. They've gone to sort of this oddball format, but we're, we're, we found ways to make it work um, when we create the catalogs because they're not publishing the catalogs anymore. They're doing straight up uh, 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 listings right on their own site, and they put out a, sort of a PDF list that you can have if you want it, but they're not doing uh, as many. If I, They may be discontinuing printed catalogs altogether for most of their sales, I suspect. And that's sort of something that's been coming for a while. It was, it was talked about at a convention in Paris uh, about a year or two ago that was done by um, uh, Invaluable did it. And uh, they had a symposium, and they were talking about the demise of the auction catalog as, as a printed book. All right, so uh, get used to that. At any rate, this is the important Chinese works of art sale that they've got also at Sotheby's. Some very, very good lots in here, some excellent bronzes. And as I said, we'll do a video on Monday, and we'll go through these and uh, share with everybody our thoughts, and, uh, and then we'll see how it does. Well, of course, we'll go back and do a, sort of a, a, an autopsy of the prices realized afterwards, all righty? So let's head into this week's the regular part of this week's video, and we'll talk about what's been going on. Okay, and here we are. This is last week's um, uh, newsletter uh, page that went out. If you haven't subscribed to it, please do. It's free. Just come over to bitamount.com and just fill out the little form and send it in. It was, a, it was a pretty busy week over here. It was also a busy week on the global member pages. Uh, a lot of auctions closed this week. Uh, I know a number of you bought lots from the, some of these places. Uh, the sales that ended over in, in Europe especially, a bunch of new sales came up this week. And we've also added onto the Sotheby's, uh, Christie's and Bottoms page, uh, the information for their upcoming sales of well, of course. And uh, the live auctioneers page was updated uh, two or three times this week, and so was the invaluable page. I think we just marked them updated twice this week because we did sort of part of one one day and finished it up the next morning and so we didn't we didn't say we updated it twice things like that but at any rate uh, a lot of material on there and uh, uh, a lot of people have been looking on there from what I'm seeing on those on, on, on clicks I don't see who's looking I just see clicks <laughs> and uh, so I, I have no way of uh, looking at anything really
really. The, the, we don't. We st this site, by the way, just so you know, Bitamut doesn't store data on anybody. Uh, your, your usernames are never shared with anybody. We don't ever do any of that. And we are asked a, a fairly often by people for, for the email addresses of our users, and we simply do not do it. Okay, and never will. All right, now uh, let's take a look and see what happened. One of the things that was on here this week, uh, uh, this past week, and we posted it sort of at the top of the listings, uh, was this very fine pair of Kung Shi bowls. These were wonderful. And um, the seller uh, smartly pointed out that these had been sold at uh, one of the major auction houses over at Sotheby's uh, uh, not long ago. And here they are. This was the lot with a link to the item. And they sold for 12,500 pounds about five years ago. And for some reason, somebody's putting them up for sale, or, or maybe somebody passed away, who knows, could be in an estate. And uh, this seller was fortunate enough to get them. Very nicely done. And they actually used the photograph from uh, Sotheby's as the primary photo for this lot. This is their photograph. And I, I went over and I grabbed the uh, Sotheby's page, which is, it can still be found. Here's their original listing for it. Pair of blue and white uh, Qing Dynasty Kangxi period bowls, 12,500 British pounds. Uh, the original lot information, they sold on May of 2015. Okay, and uh, that includes the buyer's premium, of course. This time around, they didn't quite get that high, but they did pretty well. They brought $8,507 for the pair, um, uh, which is probably about what the consigner got for them, whoever sold them, So, which is sort of an interesting dynamic. So uh, check that out. And then over here to uh, this was this very nice, um, it's Guangxu Mark and Period, uh, Mark uh, Famille Rose Bowl. I didn't think it was Mark and Period. I think it was probably just slightly out of that, uh, sort of more Republic than, and than Guangxu. But nicely decorated, very good quality, probably done, you know, 1910 to 1920, somewhere in there. Had a good looking mark on the base and all that. Here's a side shot of it and so forth. And uh, it ended up selling, I think, pretty reasonably. I think this was a good buy for somebody. If you like Republic and late Qing pieces, sold for $291. This was a seller over in the UK. Very nice example. Most Guangxu bowls you see on the market are not Mark and Period. Only about maybe 5 or 10% of them are. Uh, the rest were done during that, that, that 10 or 15 year period after uh, the end of Guangxu because they were so popular and they were, they were liked. And it's what the porcelain makers knew how to do, so they did more of them. All right, and then on to this, this very nice uh, transitional period, Wusai, little Wusai vase, little jar that had been lamped. And it looks like it was lamped with sterling silver, which I think is rather nifty. But what a great little boudoir lamp for your bedroom. This is a small jar. These are only a few inches tall, but very, very fancy mounts on it and so forth. And uh, ended up selling for $405, but what a great lamp. What a great lamp to have in a, in a bedroom or in, 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 a, in a den or something. All right, and then over to this, this nice big 18th century uh, blue and white punch bowl. Um, here's a picture of the bottom of it. It's got sort of a Kang Kangxi going foot there. Here's the other side of it. Here it is. And I think this was a very good buy. And as I recall, this bowl was on a few months ago, and I got a feeling somebody bought it and didn't pay for it. Anyway, it's a molded. It's a molded. It has molding on it. You can see where it was molded a little bit, for, shaped, thrown and molded, and uh, ended up selling for eight hundred and sixty-three dollars, which I think was also a good deal. It was perfect condition. It did have a couple of minor frits that I, the seller, I don't think, mentioned too much, but it, overall, it was a nice bowl, and I think that was a very reasonable price. Very reasonable price. It's got that nifty, uh, that quick, that quick sort of single line uh, penciling that they, they did during the period all around it and then they shade it in nicely and so forth. And uh, here's a picture of a little butterfly on the back. It's a nice bowl, good looking bowl for under $1,000. That's nice. And then over to this, this mother of pearl inlaid lacquered panel. Uh, it was kind of dull because it looks like it maybe it was in a, in a damp environment or something. And just so you know, this kind of lacquer can be oiled and brought back. Um, it's amazing. Uh, we, we had one that we got years ago that I kept, and uh, uh, we, we found, uh, 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 was it linseed oil and turpentine sort of things that furniture restorers use, and it works wonderfully on black lacquer if you do it delicately with a paper towel instead of a cloth because all these little bits of inlay will flip, flake off if you, if, you, if you use a cloth. If you use a paper towel, the paper towel won't put enough pressure on it if it gets hooked to do any damage. But these were quite well done, nicely done panel. And uh, the sellers seemed to think that they were Qing 18th century, probably 18th, early 19th, but right in there. Sold for $728. So I suspect somebody's going to get that cleaned up and end up with one 
heck of a handsome uh, uh, mother of pearl and inlaid panel for themselves. All right, and then over to this, this very nice uh, sort of uh, uh, Cantonese style uh, watercolor of a lady uh, of a lady sitting out on a veranda. Very soft colors, very light, very delicate uh, 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 brushwork. The tones are soft. I really, really like this kind of work. Very pretty. Uh, some people wonder if these aren't faded. No, this isn't faded. This is it was done very, very softly. And if anybody, if you took the time, this is why this painting I think was a great buy for someone. If you take the time to look at it carefully on these kinds of paintings, you'll notice that the robes that the woman is wearing, the damask or patterning in the robe is actually brushed all done by hand, all painted in very, very nicely. At a glance, you can miss it, but you always want to check for that, how much detail they put in the robes. All right, see if they have a better picture of it. I don't think they did. I think it was just that one close-up. Yeah, it was right there. And you can see that the artist uh, added a bit of very fine white white brushwork in here to to pattern the pattern the robe. And you'll also notice the uh, the very good details of the hair and all this on the head shows a, a delicate hand painted this. And somebody got it, I think, for a very fair price, six hundred and fifty-seven dollars for what is probably a mid nineteenth century painting, but nicely done, nicely done. I love those. And then over here to this, this was I think the misdated item of the week. And somebody in the end probably uh, knew what it was and got a very, very good buy. They had listed this as post-1940. And uh, if you flip this thing over and took a look at the bottom of it, that is not a post-1940 foot rim. That is a, a late 18th to early 19th century foot rim with this very nice sort of soft Qing Bai uh, blue glaze and these cracks and so forth, that nice iron oxide line running around the back. Here's a picture of the interior. Here's a picture of the mask. This is an old piece. And somebody um, uh, capitalized nicely for themselves, I hope, on this and paid $70 for it. As I said, leave a bid. All right, that was a good, a good deal. And the seller, for some reason, um, uh, didn't provide a heck of a lot of information, just colors, um, post-1940 Chinese porcelain, uh, origin, uh, original repro unknown. Um, it's too bad because he probably would have gotten a lot more for this if he had... Uh, dated it accurately and, and, and done a little more work on it. Unfortunately, he didn't, but very fortunately for the buyer. But that is an old, that's an old foot rim. It's even got a very old dark stained hairline in the bottom and other these amber, these natural hairlines that obviously are old. Uh, they don't look stained or, or, or treated to look old. Okay, any rate, $70.90. Leave a bid. Leave a bid when you see things like that. Um, and if you want, you can always, you know, if you wanted to, you could, you're not sure. As many of you know, we have the, uh, the identification assistant thing on the bidamount.com page where you can submit images to us or auction listings to us. And um, we, can, we can look at it uh, and let you know uh, what's going on. This was sold by a seller over in the UK, so our second opinion box does not appear on this page if you want to reach out to us through eBay directly. But you can always come over to the bid amount site and use that. And I would have told somebody right away, yeah, it's a six to $800 incense burner at least. Okay, anyway, that's the way it goes. And then on to this. I thought this was a very nice buy for the week. Somebody bought this uh, nice, it's a, it's a basic Chinese bamboo fan, obviously, but somebody gilded it with paint and then decorated it, inscribed it. And I think this was an excellent buy for someone. I thought this was just lovely. Sometimes you find fans that are very sort of, not a poor person's fan, but a very simple fan, or looks like a simple fan at a glance, but beautifully painted, because there was a good artist involved. <clears throat> and one of the things that not many people notice, I suspect, is in the bottom, you'll notice that the blades themselves have been inlaid or, or etched with the scene of a woman sitting before a panel, okay? This is, again, one of those things when you're looking at artwork, Chinese stuff, you want to examine it carefully. And I'm hoping that the seller uh, showed a good, there it is, and kept this in here. Here's the picture of the lady sitting on the terrace looking out with the flowers in the garden up above. All right, this was done onto the fan. And this is why this fan was one heck of a nice buy. There's a better image of it right there. All right, so the cracked ice pattern uh, balustrade going around her and so forth. There were some minor losses at the end of this. I couldn't care less. There's a good clear looking seal on here by the artist. 
And I think this was just a, a really great buy for somebody. It may not be a very, very famous artist, but as an object, as a cultural object, to pick this up for under $800, I think was a great buy. I thought that was just absolutely lovely. $255 from a seller in France. Nice going. All right, and then over to this, this uh, spoon, uh, what do they call these? Uh, spoon, spoon rinsers, spoon coolers, whatever they are, uh, shaped like a conch shell. This is Chinese silver. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Or nautilus shell, not a conch shell, a nautilus shell. And with, with, the, uh, with the lid, this is a European form that was adopted by the Chinese, uh, the Chinese silversmiths around 1900 to 1920. This was done by Sun Xing in Canton. Uh, obviously, they brought a, 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 a European example, and um, they replicated it. And somebody picked this up, I think, very reasonably for $541, and it was marked in the top by the maker. A marked piece. And Canton silver is uh, uh, quite interesting because it's, it's sort of a specialized export market item. And then over to this, nice little pair of desk objects, table objects. Uh, one of them looks to be sort of a, a, an early 20th, late 19th, early 20th century example here that's marked in red with China, probably done between 1895 and, you know, 1910 or something like that. But the little, the other brush, the, the beehive form pot was a nice one. This is a, a good bit older than that. This is a mid 19th century or earlier example. That's a good looking bottom on that. And it had the ivory lid, the turned ivory lid. Typically, when you see these, it means that it's been to Japan, because the Chinese use the uh, the Japanese use these uh, to store tea in, and they made these very delicate little ivory covers for them. And you find them also on little sung jars that have been exported to Japan and so forth. Uh, I've had I've had many of them over the years, and it just means it was in a Japanese collection at one point. It was being sold by a dealer in in, in the UK, and somebody picked this pair up for three hundred and nine dollars, which I think was a perfectly good buy. Both the the, 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 uh, the, the the jar particularly had a nice clear to blue blue uh, glaze on it, has an old body crack in it and so forth, probably from getting bumped, but I don't care. I like that. It's got a great feeling to it. And then on to, uh, the, oh, we did those already, the pair of bowls, excuse me. And then over to this, this nice looking uh, early Japanese Amari with um, a lot of gilt decoration running around the outside of it and this beautiful uh, f central scene of a balustrade with flowers and uh, trees coming up behind it and so forth. A nice looking example. This is from the Shangri-La guys over at uh, 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 Ceramics and Col I always get it mixed up, the uh, name, the, the Chinese Ceramics, the Ceramics and Collectibles sellers, okay? They've been on here for a number of years now. They've got 2,265 feedbacks, they're busy. And we also have a link to their site, by the way, off the bitamount.com homepage, if you want to go and see their own stuff. They're good guys, nice guys. And uh, there's this molded uh, early Japanese dish in very nice condition. The gilding on it was quite good. There's a good photograph of the back with underglaze blue and then overglaze uh, gilding in red with a red outlining that they filled the gilding in on. Just a good example. Really, really nice. And uh, I don't think 300 bucks was unreasonable for that at all. $345 for a nice-looking dish. It was about 8 inches in diameter. Good-looking piece. And then over here to this, this Kangxi bowl. This was over on Katawiki, which is also, as, as all of you know, at the bottom of the newsletter page. We put a lot of Katawiki stuff in every week. This was a good buy, $261, 261 euros for this Batavia type uh, brown exterior and then in interior painted uh, blue and white dish with the double ducks double geese rather, with one, one in the sky. Very nice little bowl, 261 euros. And then this, this closes in uh, a couple of days. Uh, and it's, it's on the uh, Bitamount site. This is over in Katawiki. It's one of these very nice Seto uh, oil dishes. They're, they're, they're a very specific class of collection, collectible from Japan. They did these um, in uh, Seto and pottery ware. They did them in sort of a blue and white porcelain as well. And uh, wonderful example, wonderful example. I like this one. It's very rustic. Uh, some of you remember uh, a few months ago, uh, 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 the seller Ma San in uh, the UK had the sale of uh, Brian Page's things, the dealer who passed away a, number, a couple of years ago in 2018. He had a, his own collection of these plates, and they did fine. And most of them, uh, just so you know, they brought somewhere between $150, $175, and around, I think, maybe 400 bucks. And right now, this is at 17 euros with two days to go. And I think this is a nice one. I like the way it's drawn. It's very folky. And then this uh, was the uh, Wan Lee uh, period uh, dish. Nice looking one with a couple of ducks on, sitting out on a rock. 
and this one sold for uh, five hundred and eleven dollars. <throat> now it had a big estimate, fifteen hundred to two thousand euros, sold for five hundred eleven euros, and you notice that it met the reserve. Okay, so he may have made he may have had a mistake in his his estimate or something, or he just put up a big estimate and but didn't put a big reserve on it. I don't know. It's hard to figure the psychology sometimes. And then this, the Kangxi dish. This is a nice one. It's sort of a stock pattern of uh, grapes and vines and so forth. And uh, it closes on Sunday. It's up to 366 uh, uh, euros. And uh, does not appear to have a reserve. Uh, bids excluded. No reserve. So right now, this thing is free and clear to buy. It's 34 centimeters or about 14 inches in diameter. And it closes in just a couple of days. All right. And that's about it for the week. A lot going on. We'll be back Monday with another video. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. Uh, we do these, as, as our users will tell you, we do them uh, faithfully at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. And uh, come over to bitamount.com and uh, join the forum. Take a look at things. Sign up for the newsletter page, which is free. Check out the global member pages, which have gotten very, very busy in the last uh, couple of months since we started that. Uh, coming up on a year now. But uh, it's been a lot of fun doing that and maintaining it and, and, and finding things to share with everyone. And um, that's about it. So have a wonderful weekend. We had snow here this morning. We had 50, 40, 50 mile an hour winds off the uh, ocean at our house this morning, bright and early. I got up at around 5. It was howling. Huge waves rolling in. We had 10, 15 foot waves hitting the rocks behind our place. And uh, wild. Just a wild morning up here in Gloucester. But that's all right. It's winter. I got my winter sweater on. Everybody's fine. Okay. See you all on uh, probably Monday afternoon with another video. Have a great weekend, and uh, good luck out there finding things. And uh, thanks so much again. Bye-bye.